Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the 2023 World Championships. Coming to you live from Morristown. As always, I am Dan Tartaglione, also known as DTartag1. Uh, in just mere minutes, we're going to be streaming the main event, uh, everything that this year has culminated to. Uh, we got a lot of exciting uh, stuff going on today. But first, we do have some announcements coming to you live from our uh, tournament advocate as well as the Hall of Famer, uh, Chris Schoenthal. So we're going to shoot it over to inside the game room and get those announcements rolling here. And then uh, right after that, be back in with uh, myself and uh, Brad Reinhold. So stay tuned, everybody. Uh, I'm going to have some extra prizes. I'm going to drop out here like 10 for the event that 
you can feel free to pay. Um, you all do it, so you have to do that. More or less, just out here. I guess you have to do it. Like the other guys. And then, like, we're in the same thing. That's really great. So, yeah, so that's all I have to do. Just picking all the events that we're going to be doing. All the different events throughout the course of the year. It's great to be Yeah, just enjoy it. Thank <laughs> you. 
everybody so we are back after that uh big announcement uh greg shaw making it into the hall of fame Congratulations, uh, great. well uh joining me today as my co-commentator for the f first part is uh the man who has went back to back runner-ups last year uh brad reinhold uh he has graciously volunteered to come on as the co-host how are you doing today brad i'm doing good so again uh greg shaw newest member of the hall of fame uh, we will have our first round pairings. Our first round is going to be uh, Brian Mischke on dark versus Matt Sokol on light side. Ooh, that should be epic. Like, uh, I, I don't know who uh, who all knows about uh, Sokol, but I mean, he, I think he's won a world champion before. Oh, or championship. Yeah, so so he's somewhat of a good player, right? And now we have uh, Mishki, who... Mishki got second place at the Worlds. Yeah, and his loss was only to... The man himself. Well, one of the man. One of the men. Sorry. Uh, I think it was uh, Bastion Winklehaus. It was Bastion, yeah. So I, I think this is definitely going to be a fun little pairing. Mishki's been kind of out of the game for a while, and he's been coming back slowly and surely. So we'll see what happens. I, I know. I'm trying to fix Brad right now. Sorry. <laughs> okay, let's... I text Yvonne, I am not. No, you're our uh, resident uh, videographer, though. Oh, great. Thanks for the uh, vote of confidence. So... Okay, give me a mic check. Mic check, mic check. Hello, hello. I'm here. You mean to keep going? Okay, so does that sound better, Christian? Much better. Okay, perfect. Okay, we're just going to leave it like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we got Bastion on. That's great. Hey, Bastion. How you doing? So, again, our first uh, game is going to be Mishki versus Sokol. Uh, Mishki on dark side, Sokol on light side. So as soon as uh, looks like everybody is getting ready, uh, there were a lot of really good matches. Huh? Yeah, we we see him. And it looks like Matt is playing zero hour. That's a popular deck. It's a very stable platform. Uh, it gets activation really fast and really stably. Um, it has good fighting potential, good draining potential. It's a very balanced deck, very good all around. Um, look for a lot of evasion most of the time, or going down in power piles to kind of push people off sites. And it looks like Mishki is running Agents of Black Sun. Ooh. So this is going to be a fun one, I think. Uh, 
not I, I don't know of a lot of people who said that uh, Black Sun was going to be a very like, popular deck today. Uh, I know it's one of those decks that anybody who knows it, uh, if you if you're a good player with it, you can almost win almost any matchup. Yeah. What's going to be difficult for Matt is he's got to have to find his Luke, and you're running maybe one two. So typically they'll run either two Master Luke or two EPP Luke, but it all depends on if he thought he would see AOBS considering AOBS has not been around very much this year. Um, if he didn't expect it, he might only be playing one, in which case he's going to have a really hard time, especially if he doesn't have the evasion at the right time or the right evasion at the right time, or there's a sense involved, because most of the time they don't, the zero hour doesn't have a way to interact with sense very well. Um, although some zero hours do play alter, so that's a possibility. And the main reason they play Altar is for Blast Orc controls. Because that can end Narrow Escape and Barrier and all the good tricks that they like to use mm -hmm. impeaceably. Okay. While they are setting up, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the cameras a little bit. Uh, Brad, would you take over for a second? Talk about this matchup a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Can you put the, the stream on the screen over here so I'm not looking over there the entire time? Thank you. Well, here, what we'll do is, you know what? I'm going to do this. So it looks, it looks like, like the standard three effects, except he's not using insurrection original he's using insurrection combo mm -hmm. um i don't like that that actually limits the forfeit value that he's got and it i mean it does make the, the opponent pay more for retrieval but i don't like that i think the original one's a little bit better in my opinion yeah make sure you guys avoid the the blocks mishki because like for example saving or um zeb being forfeit plus two it's just absolutely huge and fighting on on the ground, um, especially against stuff like ISB, um, which I know has been seeing some play online, uh, where it's just really a lot of power or destiny or whatnot. Um, so having the original insurrection over the insurrection combo is usually where I like to go. And I know uh, Timo, where we play tested last year, um, that was his style and that was the brew that he came up with. So. I know that's seen a lot of success with a lot of players around the community over time. Okay. Looks like we're activating some here. Starting the first turn, playing some shield, playing a dagger. Uh, he's probably going to go get I Am Your Ship unless he's already got I Am Your Ship in his hand. If he's got I Am Your Ship in his hand, that would be great for the zero hour play. Because uh, then he can use it to go get Hera and the Ghost and then pull it again to use it as a combat trick later on in the game. Yeah, there's not a lot we can do with the glare bastion. Unfortunately, it's just how the the setup of the room is. We struggled a little bit yesterday with it, but today, hopefully, it's not as bad. We see a lot of activation for the AOBS player already. Yeah, he's got both the palace and the the array or the second site uh, no swamp yet but there's the bounty yep okay and he's also got the golden rod shield ah, glad to see get Tom on the chat golden rod shield makes sense because then the emperor costs two more to deploy mm -hmm. when he goes to the non-battleground site and interesting to see that he it looks like he got the sh the sights out without the Vigo, right? And then he plays the Vigo for backup. Yeah, I, I like the Vigo there. Like I don't feel like he's going to be t 
two two press to like uh, protect the Shizor, but I mean the Vigo gives them a little bit extra. Well, uh, I mean anything can happen. Mm -hmm. I mean it's it's a bunch of rebels. I mean nothing would be worse than let's say a daughter of Skywalker coming down, canceling Shizor's game tax, and then blowing true. it off. And mass getting nine activation this turn. That's pretty impressive for a turn one. One of the benefits of the the uh, Lothal Jedi Temple site, getting three icons while you're giving up one. Yep. There's a home one docking bay. He's probably going to pull Malakor. Yeah, you called it. I mean, it's free activation that you pull right away. You don't have to give up anything. It's part of your starting card. I mean, why not play it? Mm-hmm. Tarkin and he gets a side out. Yep, that's Tarkin Town. I think it'll be a real question to see if he's playing four sites or three sites. I know the current theory is you play the two two site as well as all three other sites, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like sometimes doing that you throw away the game because you have too many sites to hold on to, and that makes it hard to stay flipped as a zero hour player. Especially and, against stuff like Thrawn. And we did see that he has the ghost as well as Hera coming down. It's too bad he doesn't have a Kanan Jarrus to go with that to draw some cards while he's setting up. Yeah, that would have been a really good, a really strong t uh, turn one. Okay. Plays. Does he back up Hera at all? It doesn't look. Uh, like it doesn't it. look like it, but I mean, there's That's battle plan. That's awfully risky. Yeah, I mean, a Zuckus and Miss Hunter would be really bad for him. Well, it depends on which Zuckus they're using. I think. I think either from, of them. From thinking about it for AOBS. I think that they would want to play the new Zuckus and Mist Hunter because it shores up the matchup against um, Skywalker Saga mm -hmm. and like Hitko and all those decks that add multiple destiny in space, um, and and Hanchu and the Falcon. Uh, it helps against uh, Wedge and Chip. I mean, it's just a really good ship in AOBS. That's a good point. So it might not be so bad to leave Hera by herself there, but she doesn't trigger with anybody except for Mithra Nudu in AOBS. That's a really good point. I mean, Matt would need something to come down, like another ship coming down. Um, there are a few A-wings that react, so those are also possibilities. It doesn't look like he saved enough force, though. It looks like he only saved the one. Well, then he's got a barrier. True. We'll have to wait and see. Maybe a while, maybe not long. If he's saving one, I don't think that he's going to go all out against Hera and the Ghost right away. Because mm -hmm. that'd be a good way to throw away the game if there is a barrier and he doesn't have an answer for it. Because then it's like three guys on the Ghost and two more ships and then good game on turn two. It's just not a good idea to attack Hera and the Ghost if he's threatening barrier. Unless you've got a real good answer. Yeah, that's true. Okay, Mishki thinking about what he wants to do here. Let's see, he was getting one. One other interaction I want to mention is that if he is playing Zuckus and Mist Hunter with Forlom and he puts it there with the Ghost and then the Zero Hour player flips, he can't limit the Destiny at the system anymore. So the Zuckus and Mist Hunter would be immune less than five and do oh. nothing. That's one way of getting around that uh, limiting of the destiny for your opponents on the at the Lothal system. Yep, that's built into the objective. A lot of locations on the tables uh, so far. Well, ABS plays a lot. Yeah, and then Zero Hour does as well. It does. So Matt's going to go ahead and use his escape pod combo. He's going to grab himself a Hojix or possibly another Dejeric. Yeah. You would think it would be might the Hojix be here. Hmm? Might be War Beast. Might be um, Might be uh, Sabret. Might well, I mean, there's no Sabret. Mantillion Sabret. Dark side. No, Matt was playing it. Oh it's yeah, 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 yeah. Mantillion Sabret. Yeah, I don't see that though. Like, uh, looks like Matt did lose a card there. It looks like he lost to the objective. Uh, lost Anakin Skywalker off the top. So I wonder if Mishki just forgot about it, being that he was on the seventh side of his objective. Uh, it looks like he did have to lose the card after the sewer came down, but I could have been wrong. Okay, we move on into Matt's turn after 
Mishki activates. Uh, Justin Desai, I think, is playing against Chris Kelly. Another site coming down. Let me see if I can get uh, confirmation from our uh, tournament advocate. There's a Kanan. So he'll draw the top card of the use pile. I would expect a Zeb to come down from the effect soon. There's a Zeb. Draw another card off the use pile. That's one of the best things about Zero Hour is it just refills your hand by playing cards that advance your board. It's a really great mechanic. Yeah, there was a lot of good matchups in this first round. Uh, some of the, the big ones, Brian Fred versus Phil Asen, uh, Justin Desai versus Chris Kelly, Edward Sheen versus the newest Hall of Famer, Greg Shaw. Big congrats to Greg again. AJ Hatoum versus Mike Kessling, AJ who just won the... Uh, the cube yesterday and got second at his regional yeah uh, Charlie Arlinson versus Joe Olson that would have been a good one yeah I think we're in a good game right I now I do think we too I think so So, um, Battle of Old School Mark Walseth versus Mike Pistone another draw wow he's really loading up here and getting the maximum advantage from that Kanan yeah, I like what he's doing here. I mean, Ezra's immune to attrition. Zeb draws a battle destiny. Kanan is no slouch. And he's flipped and able to subtract or add by four. Yeah. So he he's, depending on what he does here, will telegraph whether he's got dodge, narrow escape, mm -hmm. all those things. Now, dodge is less good right now because com scan detection is so good and so popular. Yeah. But, like... I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what happens here. Oh, he just leaves them on islands. Okay, so I would expect a dodge here. So we'll see if there's a com scan or a sense or a get combo or a Lana Dobreed or any number of the infinite things that cancel reacts. Okay, and uh, our Twitter supervisor slash one of our many key volunteers mr james martin has sent us over the archetypes for today's uh event unfortunately it's not loading on my phone so give me a second i'm just going to pull it up over here This way we can see what's going on as I load this. Okay, so Matt loses another card off the top to the objective. He looks like he lost a Ray. So two kind of important characters. Well, I mean, Ray's, Ray's good, but he's not. she's not that important. Yeah. I think the only character in this matchup for the light side that's really important is Luke. True. I mean, that, that actually makes sense considering, I mean, the first... Like, like the, everybody else is pretty much interchangeable. They all draw destiny and do things. I mean, Ray's really good, though, because she gets you that card advantage and everything, but, yeah, well, I, I, mean, I agree so with you. so does Kanan. So does Ezra. I mean, Ezra gets back any guy from the Lost Pile. Um, Ray, Ray's good. Ray's really good. Like, drawing a card from the bottom of the force pile and getting a use pile pull is really good, don't get me wrong. But yeah. she also costs five. In zero hour, because she's not a rebel. Mm -hmm. And with the modifiers from the sites, Kanan's only a four, Ezra's only a four, um, Zeb is only a three. Ray is actually one of the more expensive characters in the deck. But, I mean, the thing about her is even though she costs five, I kind of like that because you get that extra card when you act, uh, you That's search true. your use pile. That's true. So here we go. A lot of different decks today. Um, wow. Walkers. 
walkers. I've seen Yoda a commuting, few, Yoda commuting, Obi a little commuting, bit of uh, Obi Wan commuting. Hidden base, Anakin saga. Oh wow, this is a big one. Johnny Chu playing Rendezvous Point. Let the Wookiee win. Yeah, we knew about that. Uh, he's also playing Angels of Black Sun. Good. That's Jared, a good deck. Angels of Black Sun. The uh, home one, Let the Wookiee Win, Rendezvous Point deck is an all-space deck that gets around the new card that affects both Hidden Base mm -hmm. and um, uh, Y40 because you don't have a Hidden Base objective on the 7 side and you also don't have a Liberated System. So that okay. card does absolutely nothing to you. Yeah, definitely a lot of different decks today, though. Like, there's not... Uh, there's a little bit of a deck, but I mean, at the same time, it feels like there's nothing like that I'm looking at and just seeing like, a ton of. I'm seeing a lot of different commuting, so. Yeah, commuting. Uh, I even see like there's a Qui Gon commuting out there. Like it's definitely going to be a fun event. I so, like this William Bill Taco Kafer. Reading the cards, always a bad sign. Oh, yeah. Uh, we do have at least one TTO in the field. That's probably large pork. No, that's Matt Sokol. Really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I like this, though. Brian Fred, Diplomatic Mission to Alderaan ISB Operations. I like this Let's one, go. too. Let's go. Rake Shaw also on ISB Operations and Anakin Saga. Let's go. Yeah, we're going to get some good matches in everybody today. Like like I said, it's not going to be like it was last year where like everybody was playing ROPS. This year there's diversity, and I love that. Yeah, okay, so we got Mara J coming down in front of Zeb. Always a good sign. And there's the barrier. Yep, there's a barrier. The Emperor with a Tarkin's Bounty is over on Coruscant. And then he takes back the barrier, apparently. And Ara Singh with Blaster Rifle going down in front of Kanan Jarrus. And it looks like we're getting a count of the uh, Force Pile. So it looked like he took back the barrier. Which is curious. Uh, yeah, I'm going to hold on. Because I saw him take back the force he used and put the card back in his hand. I'm just checking with uh, show and tall, uh, Chris Schoenthal, see if we're doing active judging for the stream game. Yeah. And then he's unactivating for us. Okay. So a little bit less precision here. I thought the, I thought precision was the name of the game. I thought so, too. Oh, well. Okay, we do have now another we have barrier. barrier. Uh, the barrier does go lost because of tentacle. Yep. Django Fett going down. Oh, that's not looking good. So that's... <laughs> well, I mean, zero hour can subtract from either the Destiny on the weapon or the Battle Destiny. Mm -hmm. But two Battle Destiny is pretty rough on the Kanan. True. However, it does look like Matt has a narrow escape in his hand. Okay. So he might still be fine. The only thing is he's giving up that sight as a drain of three. I'm worried about Zeb, to be honest with you. I'm not. Well, forfeit doesn't I mean, do much good. Depending on where he ground. goes with where Mishki uh, attacks first, like if he attacks with Zeb for or uh, he can't narrow escape Zeb. Zeb can narrow escape only works with a rebel of ability greater than two. That is true. 
That's a good point. So he does narrow escape over with Cain and Jarus. And now he cannot dodge because he has to be alone and he's not alone. Well, he will be alone for the fight. He can dodge the swing. He will be alone when the battle is actually initiated because Kanan was already in a battle. Yes. Yeah. Mishki taking out Tarkin Town like he just read the card. Like he, this is the first time picking up the card. That's a good grab. U used battle evasion is a good grab. Yeah. And, and that's a good point. Like him getting rid of Mara here is the right move. Yeah. And also saw a Leia Rebel Princess in his hand. That could be really good for him. That could be really good for him. Well, it looks like he didn't initiate the battles. So, looks like Zeb lives to fight another day. Yeah. That barrier really saved him. Even though it did go to the Lost Pile. Yeah. Now, again, Matt, right now, being that he's on the seven side of his objective, he's going to be able to drain for one either in space or on the ground, and then he's going to get another drain of two in. Correct. So, he's about to do three points of damage. There goes a Dark Time for the Rebellion off the top, Disarmed, and Masterful Move combo. Okay. The masterful move combo leads me to believe that he probably does have the Zuckus MS Hunter with Vorlom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's a really good point there, Tom. Uh, the Dark Time for the Rebellion is a really good card. And there's the, our first look at one of the Lukes. That is Luke Skywalker, Rebellion's Hope. Interesting to see that Luke. Like... I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. But maybe he's playing a X-Wing or two? I don't know. Yeah. Or like, if he's playing R2 in Red 5. I could see it. Yeah. Like, it's a Destiny 7. Play a few of those. Yeah, play, like, three of them. Yeah. Fl float a couple Lukes. But that would be horrible against AOBS if you were planning on going to space. True. And again, Mishki is still on the seven side of his objective. Okay, so let's see what Matt is going to do here on his turn. I think, like I said, he's got, looks like he's got options. We did just see him drain for three. I think you flop down Leia with Kanan and Zeb. Blank that site. Yeah, blank that yeah. site. Be super huge. Have a lot of forfeit. Make it really intimidating to come at you. Make it so that uh, Mishki's going to have to have an answer with, in some form, like droid. Well, they play a lot of droids. Yeah. I think they also play Joss Per. They can, anyway. Yeah, I think you're right. Like, I think they can. Yeah, because he's a assassin. Uh, Matt is the player on the top. He is playing light side. Oh, thank you. I did not realize that we don't have those up there yet. I knew we were forgetting something. So we see Luke going down to the unoccupied side. And it looks like that is a master Luke. The scariest of the scary for AOBS. Uh, yeah, he's definitely up there. Well, I mean, are you more scared of Luke with lightsaber in this matchup? 
I think the one with immunity would be the scarier one. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Like, especially the one that blanks all the guys that AOBS plays. Uh, yeah, with Mara and uh, Ara Singh all the way over there on Lothal. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, like, like they play one other character, maybe they can get around it, and that's Jasper. Yeah. And the Emperor, and the Emperor can't go there, because the Emperor's already committed, and he can't go where Luke is. Circle playing a very tight game of cat and mouse at this point. Yeah. And right now, I think with now that Luke's on the field and the setup that he has, it looks like it's favoriting Matt. Very much so. Like, he's got space occupied. He's not paying to train. He's doing... Also, Mishki having to read everything is, mm -hmm. like, not boding well for him. Because no, it makes it, it seem like he doesn't know the matchup at all. And there's Leia going down in front of Django and Ara Singh. And then they just move over? Yeah. And, yeah. Because, I mean, the thing is, like, at Tarkin Town, unless Tarkin's there, it's a drain minus one. Yeah. So you're giving up the drain of one to block that drain of three? I, think, I like that. Yeah. Plus, now you have Leia out. You can, If you need to, you can start canceling drains. Yeah. And, yeah. of course, there's going to be a battle plan, so he's going to have to pay to get the drain canceled. Yeah. Which is not going to happen. Yeah, no. And, I mean, right now, Mishki is essentially paying six damage, or six life. To do one damage. To do, well, two damage. He can drain over with Shizor, and then he's got the drain at Tarkin Town, where Matt might decide to cancel it. I think he'll cancel it. Oh, you're right. Good point, Bashing. He cannot cancel it, because Mara is out. Tarkin's Bounty says you cannot, lay out a Rebel Princess cannot ah. cancel a drain. Where an Imperial is. That's a good call. That's, That's a, a good, good card call. and a good. It's a good call and a good card. Yes. Yeah, so who invented that card? Anyway. Uh, some jerk. I know. <laughs> I have not heard of that card, John. Could you could you let me know what it does? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and there's an IG-88 going down in uh, to Lothal. IG-88 with Riot Gun? Yeah. Ooh, that's a pretty that's good awesome. card. That's a pretty good card for me. I Michigan. like that card. Because now Cause, with... cause he's getting three Battle Destiny now. And he's got the shot with R. Singh. And he's got the shot with IG to grab somebody. Yeah. Like if So he... <laughs> this entire thing just flipped a little bit. Oh, yeah. With one card. That's amazing. I like that one. So, like, don't get me wrong. P fifty nine wouldn't be bad. That's better. It's a whole nother battle destiny. It's a capture. Yeah. Another bounty hunter droid gets around Leia. Yeah. I think he's gonna capture Leia here, or go for Leia. Uh, or do you and a Dengar with Zip? blaster gun. Ooh, I I like this even more. Because it depends on how much force Sokol's got. Because if Sokol's only got like one or two force, he can't narrow escape the entire pile away. No. Uh, and Eric skips grabbed. I think it's on the tentacle, though. Yeah. This game just did a 180. But but he's got to pay one for each character to move yeah. away. Uh, there is a keep your eyes open. It uh, looks like it's on the lost pile, though, so I don't know if he just played it. Uh, I'm assuming he did. Okay, there is a Destiny draw of a three. And he will subtract from it. Again, right now he's just uh, subtracting three from it. Disarmed and a force push. So I'm 10. assuming that's against the Kanan Jarus. Oh, he hit. Yep. Oh, that's so he didn't play the keep your eyes open. This is swinging. Okay.
There's the Zuckus and Forlom in the Miss Hunter. I was right. That's cool. Yay. <laughs> that makes me happy. It's the small things in life, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> to hit Zeb. And again, he's getting three destiny here. He hit yeah. Kanan. He hit Zeb. Uh, looks like he misses Leia. Is he going to go for the capture, or did he already do that? I think he went for it. And there's his battle destiny. See, a five, a four, and uh, Boba Fett bounty hunter. So five, a four, and a three. And to three for Matt. But we know that he already used his objectives to subtract. I believe that was from the capture. Yeah, so that's so, not super scary. Yeah. So Misty's going to end up losing one character, whereas Matt, he just lost his entire stack. And then plays the Hujiks. Yeah, wow. So we already burned through one Hujiks. And it looks like the Falling's Fist is out on Coruscant. So now there's free drains as soon as he gets a guy up there. Yeah. You think he's going to shuttle up the... Uh, the um, the Vigo? I would I wouldn't mind the Vigo, and the reason is, yeah, he just yeah, because you still have the Shizor's bounty to protect Shizor. Yeah, uh, he, he hasn't move, burned through that yet. Yeah, he moved Mara Jade over, blocking the drain where Ezra is. That also flips Matt back. Yes, it does. So again, this entire game just did a 180 in one turn. That's and, impressive. And that's just Mishki being extremely patient. And playing one card. Yep, there's a drain of two at the sewer, drain of one at Lothal. Uh, see him lost, an, he lost an Emperor, and then he lost Boba Fett Bounty Hunter. So, I mean, the Emperor, not so much. It is just a Destiny 6. The Boba Fett might become a little useful, but he can, well, he again... Might be, he might be playing two. Yeah, and the other thing is, he ha I don't think he's used his sewer yet, so he can easily get one back. Yeah. Matt looking through his deck really quick. Matt thinking about what he wants to do here. Again, it is currently in his either in his control phase or his deploy phase here. I believe it, it we are in his deploy phase as he used his objective look for sight. If it were me, I would take some time here and really think yeah. about this because he's in a really hard spot right now. Yeah. Like if it were me, I would probably try to go to the second system if I couldn't flip back right now. And just try to spread super wide and do that. The problem is, though, AOBS can pick you off very easily if you go super wide and you're not flipped. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, if you're Matt, what are you, what's your, what's your game plan here? Can you pull up the, the deck spreadsheet again? Ah, uh, sure. I love that. I'm just trying to see what Team 5 is playing. So, let's see. Jeff Levine, Anakin, and Desert Landing Site, S-A-V. So they um, might be playing the the Tom deck. Yeah. He's also playing the Tom deck with the Obi-Wan communing. They're all playing the Tom deck. Yeah. So, Tom, even though you're not here, you're here in spirit as a lot of people are playing your deck. That's cool. Good for you, man. Thanks for making an impact on the community. <laughs> yeah, Hayes, Jeff Levine, Joe Olson are all playing the Tatooine SSA deck. Actually, I want to say that might be the most popular uh, dark side deck. I think ISB is because it looks like a lot of – well, a lot of uh, – New the, allies are playing yeah, ISB. Yeah, I, I see a lot of ISB, but I'm looking at this right now. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine Tatooine SSA. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. So. How many ISB? Uh, I saw at least three. 
It'd be interesting to see how many make the distance. Like what the percentage of the top eight make up. Two, three, four ISB. That's interesting. Okay. So, yeah. So literally half the number of ISBs. Yeah. Yeah, Tom, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the uh, the errata against the, the SSA deck now. Uh, after Joe or Hayes or somebody uh, play, uh, wins Worlds with it. Okay, so Seb going down in front of Dr. E and Ponda Babat, only to be uh, Shizor Spownied. Ezra moving away from the Mar Jade and Jin Urso going down to block the drain at the temple. So Mishki again only doing a little bit of damage. Uh Shizor's by himself. Honchuing the Falcons over at Coruscant right now. We That's didn't see them fight there. If Mishki can get a uh, Zuckus and Mist Hunter up there, that could be awkward. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We've got a few drains. Oh, nope. Reading of cards. Yeah, Mishki's reading. No, that was so cool reading. True. When in doubt, read. You have time to do it. You're allowed to. It's in the rules. I came here to do commentary, not to read. I know, right? What's reading? Oh, well. <laughs> That's why we do this instead of playing. Yeah. Well, I'll be honest. One of the reasons why I didn't play, I had no clue what to play today. Well, you could have asked me. I know, but that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> You've got my spell phone number, man. Come on. Uh, so let's see. We got so Jin Ursa went lost to the comp scan detection, and in response, Matt then played the ultimatum and placed Walkling out of play to get Jin Ursa back. Drain for two at the Jedi Temple. Drain for two at Ezra's Roost, and drain for one at. He didn't the grab the comp scan, did he? No, he did not grab the comp scan. That seems like a waste of a Walkling then. Yeah, being able to get the drain of two there was really big. And uh, is that Jeremy DePaulo in the chat? Wish you were here if it is. Yeah, man. No thing happened. No, we know things happen, and, and uh, unfortunately they, they happen. But Johnny Chu playing your deck. Uh, we From need Worlds a, last year. We definitely need a rata of Tom. It's been established. I don't know. That guy tries so hard. I know. We, he needs to come out to an event, like once or twice. Yeah. Meet the guys. Laugh at us all. Yeah. It'd be fun. You'd have a great time. There's like 60-some-odd people here. Why couldn't you be one of them? 60, okay, so 69 there's, players. 69 players? Yeah, 69 players. The magic number. <laughs> uh, no escape going down to get the card back for Mishki. And there's a Boba Fett bounty hunter going up to space. Well, that's awkward as all get out. Miski just... He's firing on all cylinders today. Yes, he oh, is. In this, early, in this first game. Despite having to read half the cards early in the game, he is tearing it up right now. I mean, you got to remember, this is a guy who a couple years, only a couple of years ago came second in the world to Bastion. I know, that's Not a lot of people impressive. can actually say that. I know, that's very impressive. I think impressive. there's, what, three people in the world who can say that? Uh, Tom Kelly, and I forget who the first one is. That's a trivia question. Martin Ackeson. Martin Ackeson was there the you first go. at the Worlds that I made top eight at. Speaking of which, today we're going to be doing a lot of, little bit of trivia contests, giving away some uh, get boosters as well as some AI stuff. Uh, Jared has agreed to uh, allow that. So we'll definitely be doing some trivia. Uh, and we also have a special prize uh, that I'm going to check with Scott here in a little bit. Okay. Uh, I think you know what the prize is. What's the prize? I don't know. I'm surprised about the prize. 
Well, you're the one who suggested the price. Oh, no. Yeah, That's a great price. That is a good price. That's so a great what, price. Uh, stay tuned. We'll have to do that. Uh, the Tark, uh, the character that he just played on Tarkin Town is Glare. <laughs> uh, I can't see it. That's Ezra. And... That's a lot of characters, though. We see Dr. E, R. Singh, Django, IG-88, and I want to say that's maybe Woof. Is there going to be the epic dodge? Uh, but that's we do have a GG. handshake. All and right. Mishki takes down Matt Sokol in game one. So let's go ahead. We're going to get an interview with uh, Matt here in a second. I'll Not let with you take Matt. This, with... Or Mishki. I'll yeah, let you yeah, take yeah. this one. Really? Yeah, you get the first one. All right. That was a great game by Mishki. Yeah, I agree. So I'm going to give up my headset. Okay. Uh, as soon as he... So, and I'll go grab Mishki. All right. That was a great game, guys. That was fun. I'm excited to hear what he was thinking when he was going through that. Because I'm interested to see how many reps he had going into that game against Zero Hour. So, um, hope everybody at home is enjoying the show so far. Uh, we've got a great show today for everybody. Um, we're going to have different people from around the community come in here as they win their games and talk a little bit about the things that inspired them to play the decks that they played and the things that they wanted to do and why they came out and why they wanted to play what they played. So we're going to check in with all that, especially with Miski after the first round, uh, coming up right here in just a few moments. Hey, man. Hey. You ready for your interview? Yeah, I can do it. Yeah, oh, that was a great game. Thank you, thank you. That's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. how much prep had you done against Zero Hour? Uh, honestly, not much. I Charlie is a really good Zero Hour player, uh, Charlie Aronson, yeah. and uh, he's from Minnesota too. Played yeah. with him a bunch, and I played a few games against it. Um, but because we I, noticed you reading a few of the cards early on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know every card on there, but I know the general concept of it. Uh, okay. Like every, I don't know all the text, but um, I I did play against him a few times, and he did beat me, but it gave me a great perspective. And also, I was like, no one's going to play well, this well, game. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter how many games you lose in play testing, yeah. as long as you win on the main No, exactly. Event. That's all that matters. Yeah. yeah. And I, I knew no one's going to play it as good as Charlie, so I was like, I'll be fine. People are going to make mistakes. And he, he missed some, uh, Matt missed some text as well that would have helped him out at to swing the game a little bit but um i love the grab of the narrow escape that yeah. was a good grab yeah yeah you i think you have to because you have to get battles in and once they stabilize it's over they hit you for six a turn and how many um dark times are you playing i only play one um okay i only play one i you weren't expecting a lot of wap to go with that well i think wap i'm okay with i'm fine playing wap because okay. you stay flip the entire game and you can track all your like you can track your destinies down and like just hit people yeah. um to to get rid of them so um I'm fine with WAP, but the 
uh, I was debated yesterday. Should I play two of Dark Times? Like uh, that was like even this morning, I was like, should I put in the second one? I don't know what to cut, so I just a went with one. And you know the arguments for the different Dark Times, right? Yeah, yeah, but I think the Destiny Four for Aobs is just the best one Absolutely. because you already play the uh, Emperor to get rid of projection, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, yeah. Question for you: Why mm -hmm. did you pick Aobs? I'm really comfortable with it. I think it's a super good deck, um, and honestly, you can just outplay people. So it's that's the best thing about it. I don't think you have any auto losses. I think you can, if you play well, you can beat anybody. That's why I played it. Yeah. I would agree with you. Yeah. So. I would agree with you. Yeah. I was actually surprised that the team five guys weren't playing it today. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh. I mean, the other beast deck is Walkers. I mean, that's that's just like a, a really good deck, and um, I think a lot of people are playing that. So that's what people went with. Well, we won't spoil anything for you. Yeah, but it's uh, it'll be interesting. I think there's gonna be a lot of walkers out there, so hopefully my light side does well. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing for light side? I'm playing Yoda meeting. So, nice. Yeah, just a good deck. Did you shore up the AOBS matchup? Uh, yeah, I have some some stuff in there that can hopefully help out. Um, and we'll see how it goes. But <laughs> yeah, it's I think uh, also I didn't expect a lot of people to play abs. Um, it's a it's the kind of a tough deck to play um and it can be a grind sometimes so usually... how do you like the new zuckus and miss hunter with four long for the deck i absolutely love it it makes the, your space it shores up all your magic yeah right? it makes your space so much better <laughs> and like just like before you were playing like three guys to go to your ship that were just dedicated space characters and then and if your zuckus and miss hunter doesn't hit the right way at the yeah, right time you're exactly. just kind of like dunzo in space. exactly and now it's just you just play Falling's uh, Fist, yeah, Zuckus and Mist exactly. Hunter. And you're just you're chilling. You yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. So yeah. I really like it. Yeah. I'm really glad they made that card for AOBS. So am I. It helps a lot. It's a, And it's just a good card. It's In all decks, it's really good, you know? Yeah. So pl deploy five, four, but seven, good text. So. so how are you like coming back to the game? It's been fun. I like it a lot. I uh, Actually, last year I played at Worlds and didn't test it all. I just came in. Um, had fun? Just had fun. Good. But this year I actually did some testing, played a lot of games. So I'm feeling more confident this year than I was last year. Well, it certainly yeah. showed there at the yeah. end of that game. You yeah. played with a lot of confidence there yeah. at the end. Yeah, so hopefully it continues. We'll yeah. find out. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. We have a special prize for you coming up, awesome. uh, and we will talk to Dan about that. Great. That's awesome. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. Good luck on the rest of the event. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. And we will be back shortly, guys. Well, so we're gonna oh, we're, okay. we're gonna yeah. do um, alternating things we're like at round two, yeah. okay. where, where we're gonna take breaks periodically. Yeah. So okay. it's so. It, yeah, it, it's it's really like to just like stay with it mentally. Yeah. For eight eight hours or more, it's uh, it's a slog.